worship service at Temple Heights Baptist Church. Let's open our hymnals to 134 if you need it. 134, Emmanuel. We're going to sing the chorus through twice. Emmanuel, God with us. Son, our Savior, our Lord, our King. We worship you today. We extol your name, Lord. We ask that you would work in our hearts as we worship and listen to thy word. May we apply it to each and every one of our lives. May we leave different than when we came in. And we'll be careful to give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, continuing a song unto the Lord, number 138. 138, go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. 138. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of 
funny, when you're singing, there's all kinds of stuff that's happening behind the scenes. <laughs> anyway, um, if you want to turn in your hymnals to 124, it's a short little song. But I think about how the Jewish people so long ago were waiting for their Messiah. It had been proclaimed, it had been told about in the scriptures, and they heard about it, and they heard about it, and they heard about it, and then when he came, they didn't recognize him. And I think the same thing is going on today. We're just waiting for something, something, anything to relieve us of all of our problems and all of the issues that are going on in the world. But he's come. We have a Savior. He walks with us. He knows our needs. He's meeting our needs. And he will return again. And so when it gets really, really bad, folks, and it will get worse, we need to remember that. That he has come. He loves us. He knows our needs. He hasn't forgotten us. He continues to minister to us. And we just need to get on our knees and say thank you.
heaven, away in a manger, one life seven. COVID-19. 
It's good to see Sean again. God bless you, my brother. Amen. It's good to see Billy Peavy again. God bless you, my brother. Good to see Edie's and her husband and her family. These are visitors that are becoming pretty regular now, even during this pandemic, and we're so thankful. What a blessing. I pray that the service will be a special blessing to you as visitors and everyone else, that you will receive a blessing to take home with you to apply in your lives. As you know, I'm trying to follow through as we read through the Bible, bring messages accordingly. Probably just before Christmas, I'll, I'll have a, a, a message appropriate for that time. But meanwhile, I'm trying to preach through the Bible. I hope you're doing that. How many are still reading through the Bible? Amen? Praise the Lord. That's a good number. Praise the Lord. And I know that it catches up with us sometimes, and we sort of have to play catch with it, right? Catch up. But uh, I, I know that it's a challenge, but it gives you a whole scope of the Scriptures. And with that, I'd like to you to open your Bibles with me, please. To the book of Galatians. Our reading for this weekend is in Galatians. And so I'm going to bring the message in Galatians. The book of Galatians. I will be reading chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And then I'll read 5, uh, 6, and 7. So if you found it, those that can, would you stand with me, please? And those that cannot, it's understandable. Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Paul, an apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God our Father. Look at verse 6 and 7 now. I marvel, Paul is speaking to these Galatian Christians, I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would meet with us again today. I ask that your Holy Spirit would move upon us, our hearts and our minds and our conscience, and that we would be drawn closer to you because of the preaching and teaching of the Holy Word of God, which is alive and gives life. Father, I pray that you would use me effectively this morning that you would order my thoughts and order my words in such a way, Lord, that hearts would be turned to you more than ever before. May those that are Christians be drawn closer to, the, to thy will. And those that are not, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. Father, we'll thank you for what you do in our midst. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. The book of Galatians was written by the Apostle Paul to the believers in that region, a region in Asia Minor. And the book of Galatians, the main theme is this, and I'm going to entitle it, Our Freedom is in Christ. Our Freedom is in Christ. This is the main theme of this book. 
Freedom from the law that binds and freedom from the power of sin that draws us down. We are not free to do what we please. We need to make that very, uh, very fact very clear. We're not to do what we please, but we are free to serve the Lord. It is a holy liberty. Amen. This letter or epistle of Paul was written by him to refruit the Judaizers. You say, what are those, fat pastor? Well, these are Jews that had infiltrated the believers. They were false believers. And they had infiltrated the believers there. They were used by Satan to, to uh, draw them away from the teaching of salvation by grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. To pervert the gospel. And uh, they were not true believers, but they wanted to pervert the true believer. You know, Satan is still doing that today. He's still doing that today. And they wanted, they had leadership qualities. And they, they were trying to get these believers to go back to doing rituals that they did before, like circumcision again. And the rituals of, of uh, the feast and so forth. The Jewish feast that uh, we were not we were loosed from, and we find this very clear. Notice in chapter two, I draw your attention to chapter two, and verse four, and that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came to privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. So that more or less captures what I was just saying. They, want, they wanted to bring the true Christians down. We see the same thing in so-called churches or evangelical groups today. They call themselves evangelicals, and I would say in quotation. These groups, they teach that you can receive Christ, but... You must be baptized in their group. Or they say, you belong, you, you receive Christ, but you need to belong to their church and to hold to their teachings, or you cannot be saved. You say, are there evangelical groups like that today, Pastor? Yes, there are. There are groups that say that, uh, that uh, you're saved by baptism in their church. And they, we call that baptismal regeneration and that's a false teaching and there are ch churches that believe that the only true church and that they have the only true gospel and go doctrine and teaching of Christ revealed from God to them boy they're special aren't they huh? and, and, and to their leaders and to their originators and we have a lot of groups out there that uh that are teaching this. These, if they do that, they are false religious groups. You see, I don't say that we are the only church in town that teaches the gospel. And in fact, you don't necessarily have to be a Baptist to be saved. Oh, oh. I caught your attention, right? You have to be washed by the blood of Christ to be saved. Amen. That's what we need to have. And that's what the Bible says. Are you washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? It's not the title that saves you. It's not the church that saves you. It's not those that originate. I'm glad the originator of my faith is Christ Jesus. Amen. And not a so-called name out there of a person. So-called people that originate churches and teach that their church is the only church, they are the false groups. And they teach salvation by works. Because if you have to be baptized in their church, and if you have to follow their teachings, that is salvation by works. Right. Amen? The Bible tells us very clearly that we are not saved by works. 
And if you'll, I'll, I'd like to show you that in Ephesians, the book right after Galatians, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the Apostle Paul brings this out very clearly. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so no church should boast that they are the only church. You see, a church that boasts that they are the only church, the only true church, they're false. They're false. It's very clearly. The Bible tells us very clearly that God saves us by His grace, God keeps us by His grace, and God shall glorify us by His grace. You see, salvation is totally of God. It's not of men. Now, the Bible states this also throughout. It's the message of the gospel. And we find this very clear even in the writings of Peter. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 3 through 5. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 5. You see, Peter... And Paul, I'm not talking about the music group. I'm talking about the apostles, right? Peter and Paul were on the same line of thinking. Notice this, what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. It says this very clearly. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. In other words, in Spanish, I like it the way it says in Spanish, nos hizo renacer. In other words, God is the one that makes you be born again. You're not born again of your own right or your own will, or your own efforts. It's all of God. God is the one that makes you be born again. Amen? Notice what it says here. He hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. I like that reserved in heaven. That means nobody can take my place. I have a place reserved in heaven. Amen. That means it's sure. And notice what it says in verse 5. Who are kept. I like that. In other words, who are kept by what? The power of God. Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So we are kept not by our efforts, not by religious rites, not by uh, uh, religious ordinances, but we are kept by the power of God. Amen? It's all of the Lord. Now Paul received this gospel, the true gospel, from Christ himself. If you'll turn back to Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I received, I neither received it of man, Neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so the gospel that Paul is teaching, salvation of grace, the same gospel that Peter taught in chapter 1, and we see it relates one with another, and it, it's from God. That's the true gospel, totally by grace, not by works, lest any man may boast. Amen? 
by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We see this also, verse 15 and 16. Galatians 1, 15 and 16. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by His grace, by His grace, to reveal His Son in me, that I might preach Him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So it's by God's grace that we're saved. It's the grace of God by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in, in the epistles. Now here in the book of Galatians, if we jump to chapter 3 now, because we're going to try to cover the five or six chapters in just a few minutes here. I know I'm going pretty fast. But Galatians chapter 3, these believers that had been taught salvation by faith by Paul, now they had fallen away. These false teachers had crept in to the church. These Judaizers. And they said that, yes, you're saved by faith, but... Don't forget circumcision. You're saved by faith, but don't forget all of the feast. Don't forget the rituals. And they were adding things to salvation. And Paul says, no, 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 no. That's false. He scolds them. And in fact, he scolds them pretty harsh. Look at chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. The scolding of Paul to these believers in Galatia. <laughs> oh, foolish Galatians! How would you like it if I came here and called you all fools? Hmm. Pretty harsh, right? He says, Oh, foolish Galatians! Who hath bewitched you? Boy, that's another pretty strong term. That ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? He says, I want you to look at me now. Did you receive the gift of God, your salvation, by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit? Notice the word Spirit is in capital letter there. By the Spirit of God or by the hearing or by the works of the law? And then he goes on to say, verse 3 again, Are ye so foolish? Call some fools again. Having begun in the Spirit. Notice, the word Spirit is in capital letters. He says, Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, Doth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? He says, listen to me now. Think about it. Where are you standing? Are you standing on faith or are you standing on the works of men? And so we find Paul scolds them. He scolds them and then he reiterates where their salvation truly lies. Notice in verse 7 and through 9. Verses 7 through 9 in chapter 3. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. You know what that means? That if you have received Christ by faith, you are of the seed of Abraham, spiritually speaking, just as I am. I wasn't born a Jew, I don't have Jewish blood. But I am a son of Abraham by faith in the Holy Spirit. This is what it says very clearly. Notice what it says in verse 8 and 9. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preached, among, preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with the faithful Abraham. So we're justified. What does justify mean? 
The Bible says there is none just, no, not one. It states that very clearly in Romans 3.10. What does that mean? That there's no perfect one. That we cannot earn our own salvation. There is none just, no, not one. Individually, we are lost. But the Bible says that God, the Father, declares us just through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The, that is the fact of justification. We are declared just. I am not perfect, but I have the perfect one in me. The Lord Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. Amen? And the Bible tells us there, this very clearly. If we look at verse 13, Galatians 3.13, it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Now notice that, the first three words, the first four words. Christ hath redeemed us. What does that mean? He has redeemed us. He has bought us. He has rescued us. Amen? He has rescued us, bought us from the slave block of sin. Amen? Remember in olden times, I know it's, it's not the right thing, but they sold slaves here in the United States. And they sold them on the slave block. And the people would buy them. And they would buy them. We have been bought by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only did he buy us to be a, a, a slave, he bought us to be free. We are free in Christ, dream, Christ Jesus. He redeemed us. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now you say, what the curse of the law? What does that mean, Pastor? Well, I'll tell you what the curse of the law means. What was the law given to us for? We can't be saved by the law. You are not saved by holding up the Ten Commandments. And I want to tell you something else. There were more than Ten Commandments. There were 613 commandments. You're not saved by holding up those 613. By the way, do you think you could hold them up? I don't think so. I think we've all broken them. Amen? I think we break them every week. I think we break them every day. Amen? We break the law of God every day. And why was the law given to us then? Well, it tells us very clearly. I bring your attention to chapter 3 and verse 23 and 24. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Amen? And uh, in Spanish it says the law was a crutch. We can't walk by ourselves. I like this. Uh, I like this. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Yeah, you, that, that, that. <laughs> you can't walk by yourself. I mean, you stumble through life. But the law is a crutch that helps us walk through life. And where's it helps us walk to? It helps us, brings us to Christ. Where we realize that God is holy. Amen. Holy, holy. Amen. And that we are sinners in need of a Savior. That's what the law is for. The law shows us how imperfect we are and that we need a perfect Savior. Amen? That's what the law is for. Through the law, we recognize God's holiness and our sinfulness and our need for a great Savior. And so by faith, we put our total trust in Christ and what he did 
and we become at that moment children of the promise we are become children of God notice what it says here in chapter 3 verse 26 and 27 it says here for we are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus you're not children of God by being a member of such and such a church you're not children of God by being born in this life. You know, in, in Puerto Rico or in other uh, Spanish nations, they say, oh, a new little children of, a child of God is born. What? Wait till they grow a little bit bigger. <laughs> You're going to say, where did this demon come from? Huh? We're not children of God by birth. We are a creation of God. We have to make a decision of Christ in our hearts. We make a decision in our hearts. And we become children of God by putting our faith in Christ. It says, we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 26, verse 27. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Jesus. Oh, I thought you said it wasn't by baptism, Pastor, that we were saved. Here the word baptism means submerged into. Bautizo is the Greek word. Sounds very similar to Spanish. I love Spanish because it's so similar to the Greek. Bautismo. Bautizo quiere decir, it means, I mean, I, it means this. <laughs> I'm jumping from Spanish to English here. You are submerged into the person of Christ the moment that you're saved. Amen. You're submerged into him. That's what it means in verse 26. For we are all children of God by faith in Christ. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. <coughs> verse 29. And if ye be a Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We are Abraham's seed. We are the children of promise. We are the children of God. And then fast forward. Look what it says in chapter 4 and verse 28. Chapter 4 and verse 28. Please. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. We are the children of promise. Notice what it says in chapter 5. And verse 1, chapter 5 and verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You say, free in Christ? Yes. Remember when you first got saved, and I went through this, I believe all believers go through this, you believe uh, that you need to make a list of do's and don'ts. We're that type of people. We categorize everything, right? And uh, But the law, you know what the law does? It binds us. It ties us when we make lists of do's and don'ts. You can't go to the movies. If you go to the movies, you're not a Christian. Yet you watch them on TV, Ooh, ooh. I'm stepping on toes now. The, 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 the legalists say, or those that are bound by the law say, you can't cut your hair this way or that way. Let me ask you this. How was Jesus' haircut? Do you think he had a haircut like me? I don't think so. Huh? Oh, something to think about, right? I remember back in the 70s where a man had a mustache. You're gone. And if you had a beard, you're of Fidel Castro's group. <laughs> we have some people here in beards. I know you're not Fidel Castro's group. <laughs> Or the, 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 the list of do's and don'ts. 
You have to dress this way or you can't dress that way. Well, God bless you too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or what about this one? You, got, you can't go to this place, but you have to go to that place. Because if you don't, you go to this place, then that means you're with sinners. You can't be with sinners. And by the way, let me bring this to your attention. We're all sinners. Amen. You see, when we're in Christ, we are free from doing lists of do's and don'ts. That binds us. We're not free. You don't feel liberty in Christ. But Christ, it says here very clearly, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Jump down to verse 13. For brethren, notice it's speaking to Christians. Brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not the liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. Now it gives us a clue here. We have liberty in Christ. But this liberty is not. We don't use it to do, you do the bad thing. We use it to, to do the good. Don't do things that would hurt your body. Don't have habits. That would hurt your body. Amen? Amen? For example, I'm going to be stepping on toes here. Well, here we go. Don't eat too much. That's not a pretty good message for Christmas, right? <laughs> for example, here's another one. Use liberty for your body's good and for your family's good. Do things for your family's good. Do, use the liberty to love and serve one another. That's what it says here. Use the liberty in Christ to serve. It's a holy liberty to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I've discovered something through this time. I never really saw it that clear before. But the Lord has revealed something even to me after 50 years of being in the ministry. God is revealing things to me all the time. He never ceases to learn. When we're free in Christ, we begin to walk in the Spirit. When we're free in Christ, we begin to walk in the Spirit. Notice what it says in verse 14 and 15. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. What? We fulfill all of the law by loving God above everything and loving our neighbors as ourselves. You fulfill the 613 laws. Amen? That's what the Bible says. And not only that, notice what it says in, in, in verse 15. Now, it gives us a warning here. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one with another. Am I describing some families today? You're biting and devouring one another? We live in a bickering and biting and murmuring and warring world. This is what it's all about in the world. And Paul gives us a warning here. Not to bite and devour one another. He told us in the previous verses, by, inspired by the Holy Spirit, we are to love one another. And he says here, not only that, but it says here very clearly, be careful if you bite and devour one another, that you're going to consume one another. Ooh, those are harsh words. I would say maybe there's some family members here that you're with ought with other family members. Why don't you make that right this Christmas? Don't you think that would bring honor and glory to the Lord? 
Jesus Christ this Christmas? Is the Holy Spirit speaking to you about something right now as I'm speaking? Why don't we take care of it? We have liberty in Christ, but this liberty is this, to love one another in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a holy liberty. And when we walk in that holy liberty, notice what it says in verse 15. Verse 16, I'm sorry. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. When we have freedom in Christ, we begin to walk in the Spirit. Amen? Notice Spirit is in capital letter, being the Holy Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth after the Spirit. And the Spirit against the flesh. I mean, the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye ought. That's why a lot of Christians in this world today don't grow. They're at ought within themselves. They're fighting within themselves. We need to be free in Christ if we're going to walk in the Spirit. We need to be free in Christ if we're going to show that love. We need to make wrongs right. We need to make wrongs right. Not only when we walk in the Spirit, when we are free in Christ, we begin to walk in the Spirit, but it gives us another detail. Notice verse 17, verse 18. But if ye be led by the Spirit, we begin to feel the leading of the Holy Spirit. When we're free in Christ, we walk in the Spirit. We begin to show that love. We begin to make things right that were wrong, even in our family, in ourselves, and with those around us. But we begin to be led by the Spirit. You feel the leading of the Spirit. And the leading of the Spirit is to please God and not ourselves. When we're at enmity with the Spirit, we're pleasing ourselves. And then he goes on to say, let me show you this, not only when we're free in the Spirit, we begin to experiment the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I noticed something here that I hadn't noticed before. I, I'm telling you, God is speaking to me even now. In verse 22, For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. How many are those? Nine. Nine. Who said that? Who said none? Jackie. Jackie, that's right, Jackie. I counted them too. I counted nine too, Jackie. God bless you, brother. There's nine fruit of the Spirit. Now, in Spanish, it's more detailed. When you see many things, they call them frutos, plural. But in Spanish, it says, begin in the beginning, el fruto, singular. The fruit of the Spirit. But notice there are nine which would make it plural. It should have been, according to our vernacular, the fruits of the Spirit. But it only says singular. The fruit of the Spirit. You never noticed that, right? I never even did either. But then the Holy Spirit spoke to me with this. When we experience our liberty in Christ, these fruits, which are plural, when we have liberty in Christ, that we walk in the Spirit, we're led by the Spirit, we will begin to see all of the nine fruit develop into us in the Spirit. Isn't that a revelation? Amen. You don't have to work at it! <laughs> Remember, it's not by works, lest any man may boast. We don't have to work at it. 
the Lord through his spirit begins to manifest these things into you. And you begin to love those that weren't so lovable. And you begin to have joy where you felt sadness. And you begin to have peace where you felt turmoil. And you begin to have long-suffering. You say, what's that long-suffering? Patience. Oh, write it down there. That's what it means, patience. And you begin to have gentleness. I think a lot of people near need some gentleness. And we begin to have goodness and faith and meekness. Meekness comes from also the word from uh, uh, humility. We get our self-pride out of the way. It's not about us. It's about Him. We need to honor Him. And when we're free in Christ, we begin to live for Him. We stop believing in us. Oh, if we could get this message. And temperance. You know what temperance means? Temperance means self-control. Say, oh, I've been missing that, Pastor. Oh. <laughs> self-control. Maybe some of you are short in your fuse. And you blow up a lot. You need liberty in Christ. When you get the liberty in Christ, God will begin to manifest his temperance in you, self-control in you. The evidence of Christ in us. All of these nine fruits were, de were demonstrated in the person of Christ himself. And then not only that, but I jump to verse 25 and 26. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory or our ego to be puffed up, provoking one another, stop irritating one another, envying one another. That's the description of the world. But we don't belong to the world. We belong to Christ. And we need to be free in Christ. Praise God. You know what? I got to the point in my life right now, and I'm not perfect. You can ask my wife about that. No, you better not. Or you can ask my daughters. You better not. I'm not perfect. <laughs> But you know one thing? I've learned this in my life. I've lived long enough now. Life is too short to be filled with ego. Life is too short to be bickering and biting and gnashing at one another. Life is too short to be doing a list of do's and don'ts. Life is long enough let us live free in Christ. For he's called us onto that freedom. Salvation by grace, kept by grace, and we will be glorified by grace in him. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful revelation of Galatians and how it reveals practical Christianity today. Lord, help us to walk in grace, to live by faith. Lord, that we will, in Christ, be glorified by faith. And we need, while we're here in this world, to be in liberty in Christ. We are in liberty if we put our trust totally in him, genuinely. May this 
be real to everyone today. And if it's some that still realize, I don't have what you're talking about, Pastor, would you give your life over to the Lord? You know, there's a lot of Christians that are struggling inside, in their minds and in their hearts and souls. You need to call out to God. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry of trying to build up my ego. Lord, I want you to be permanent in my life. May you be magnified in all that I say and do. I want to be free in you. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to feel the leading of the Spirit. I want to feel the fruit of the Spirit. I want, to, Lord, to just live in the Spirit. Father, help us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And you that are watching, and you that are here, maybe God spoke to you in this message. I know this has been a very concise and poignant message. But maybe God has spoken to you. Areas in your life. Why don't you give those over to the Lord? Why don't we ask God that we want to feel and live that liberty in Christ. To love one another as we love ourselves. To fulfill the law. We can't fulfill it in ourselves. But in Christ we can. Would you accept Christ as your Savior? And if you've already accepted Christ, would you just give things over to Him totally? Heavenly Father, I trust only in You. Your Word has touched my heart and my mind and my soul. And right now, I put my total trust in Christ as my Lord and Savior. Help me to live for you. Lord, maybe there's someone here that's already trusted Christ, but is struggling in areas. You that are listening to me, you're struggling right now because you don't have liberty in Christ. You have that struggle between the spirit and the flesh. Why don't you say, Lord, I'm done with the flesh. I want to give it up. Help me to walk in liberty in Christ. Help me to feel your leading, your Holy Spirit leading. Help me to walk in the Spirit, to feel and to see the fruit of the Spirit in me. I ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but that message, this whole week that I've been preparing, that I've, I've been milling over it time and time again in my mind. Amen. So much to really eat at there in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Galatians. What a wonderful message. What a wonderful message. Um, if nobody else got anything out of it, I got a lot out of it. <laughs> Praise God. I was preaching to myself. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, we're so happy that everyone is here and and uh, we just want everyone to know that you're welcome here. We have a lot of things on the table. We're already starting to open up more and more. We have a missions committee meeting immediately after this meeting. And uh, those committee, uh, mission committee, it's not going to be long. It's going to be short and sweet. But we need to take care of some things. The Bible Institute will have its last class this Tuesday for the semester. And you say, well, I haven't come all semester. Come to this class. Get a taste of what we do in the Bible Institute. We're learning about the life of Christ in the Gospel of John in detail. 7 o'clock on Tuesday. And Wednesday we have the Awana. And uh, you have the store night. The store night will be this Wednesday. No, no not this week. Oh, the next Wednesday. Okay, I'm, look, I'm looking at this wrong here. Okay. But so the following Wednesday will be the Awana store night, okay? Now on the 18th of December, we have a special Christmas 
uh, meeting for all the Hispanics. Uh, we're trying to get the temp temp temperature, and we want to start up the Hispanic services again. But we want to have sing the uh, hymns in Spanish and and the Christmas hymns and and to get a message and to excite them about serving the Lord and coming here and to meeting again together for the Word of God, starting in January by God's will. Amen? Uh, Lord willing, if the thing doesn't spike up even more. So we're playing it by ear, that everything works out. And then uh, on December 23rd, put that on your calendars, it's at, on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. We're going to have our candlelight service. Instead of the 24th and 25th, we'll have it on the 23rd candlelight service here in church. And that'll be something real special also. And so we have a lot of things coming up. Hopefully that you'll be a part of it. And uh, continue to come to our... Uh, well, there's still some people here that maybe don't know. We have our Sunday school hour at 9.30. Come to our Sunday school hour. <laughs> And be, uh, learn more of the scriptures. Peter's bringing some excellent messages for the adults. And I'm sure the rest of our teachers are well prepared for all of the age levels also. Come to our Sunday school hour. We've opened up 9.30 and as now at 10.30 the worship. <coughs> and we're so thankful. We transmit, we're still transmitting the Spanish service uh, online also, Facebook and YouTube. So that's out also. And I give this exact message in Spanish. You want to learn Spanish? Listen to the Spanish. It's the exact message that I taught today. All right? We're so happy you're here. God bless you. And be safe. Be victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ.